Come join your boy Jody Joe on Jody's Corner Thursday night, 12 a.m. Friday morning for a watch party for Wonder Woman 1984. Come join me and whoever's going to pull up live and let's watch this amazing, beautiful film together. See you guys there. From the bottom of my heart, you guys, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. For watching guys channel. Oh Jody's channel. Jody's Corner. <laughs> My favorite! <laughs>YouTube was good. It's your boy Jody Joe. Welcome to Jody's Corner. We are here. We have some more news around this uh, theatrical experience almost going the way of the dodo and all of it being due to what Warner Brothers, HBO Max, AT&T, Warner Media, all of them, all four of those entities. When you hear those, just understand that Hollywood pretty much don't like the uh, none of them because they all represent one major thing. Uh, the end of theaters, blindsiding creators, greed, and just uh, overall shady tactics. So let's go ahead and get into this new part of this article. We got James Gunn. He's joined the fray. Patty Jenkins has already said that her movies are made for uh, theaters, and she says when this is over, it will be going. She will be going to that again, which uh, doesn't spell anything positive for me, in my opinion. Uh, Christopher Nolan blasted the shit out of Warner Brothers, who's had a long relationship with them since like 2004, 2003. James Gunn's also upset. So James Gunn is reportedly unhappy with Warner Brothers' decision to move its HBO Max Suicide Squad that was supposed to come out in August of 2021. He doesn't like the idea that that thing is going straight to streaming day and day with theaters. So let's go ahead and see what James Gunn is upset about precisely, because it's not just the fact that it's releasing on streaming. James Gunn, the director of Suicide Squad, is reportedly very unhappy with Warner Brothers' decision to put the film on HBO Max. Warner Brothers will be putting all 17 of their 2021 films on HBO Max and in theaters on the same day. The films will remain on the platform for a month at no additional charge to subscribers, at which one point then it'll go to theaters exclusively. All right, so Suicide Squad is a follow-up to the 2016 film, which we all know, but with many rattled by Warner Brothers' move, many are beginning to speak out. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Gunn himself is upset by the move. The director, who is normally platform agnostic, according to sources, is upset with the move for both being blindsided and for the solutions that they offered. So not only is he upset the fact that he was blindsided as well as everyone else, because there was some type of deal between uh, Patty and Warner Brothers to put Wonder Woman 1984 on HBO Max for Christmas. And there was also some monetary compensation that they're speaking of, uh, reportedly hovering around $10 million. I believe it would probably be more than that. But um, it's also the the the... The offer that they gave to James Gunn was insulting. Sources say that the studio offered them a lackluster compensation model that would see the director and the platform profit uh, and, and other profit participants receive money on the back end. Gunn's dissatisfaction is likely bolstered by the fact that Gal Gadot and Patty Jenkins are receiving $10 million paydays. So basically what we could hear off of this is that James Gunn probably got offered a fraction of of what Patty and Gal got. And he's upset by it. Uh, he isn't the only director in Hollywood that was upset with the studio. <coughs> Excuse me. Christopher Nolan, director of Tenet, he blasted the move with reports also circulating that Wonder Woman di uh, director Patty Jenkins and its star Gal had received upwards of $10 million each. The fact that Gunn found their payment offer unsatisfactory is indicative of the lack of planning around the move. While Warner Brothers cited the desire to announce the decision quickly, that left many talent and production companies feeling blindsided. Naturally, right? Naturally, when you just say, oh, yeah, you're telling your friends, your family, the world already knows, yo, my film is coming to theaters, baby. It's going to be fine. It's coming out in August 2021, even after the CDC and everybody in the government is saying that we'll be all vaccinated by June. 
So everybody will be able to get a vaccination by June is what they're saying now. That's the update. I remember I reported on my news that by June, half of the population will be vaccinated by then, at which point herd immunity takes effect. And you'll start to see a lot of the cases just dwindling between January and May. You'll start to see less cases, less hospitalizations and far less deaths, which is going to bolster confidence, boost the economy, and it's going to boost ticket sales for theaters because people are going to want to go see the theaters especially people who have been vaccinated if someone's vaccinated they're going to be confident to go anywhere they want even if they still wear a mask okay so that's the situation right so uh the suicide squad is one of the year's most anticipated films and it's going through a heave because of the situation that warner brothers had put out uh, because of the situation that AT and T, this is overall AT and T's fault, and I don't, I don't want you, I don't want to direct all of the the blame to just HBO Max because HBO Max is part of it, Warner Brothers because they're kind of part of it, Warner Media because they're part of it, but AT and T overall is the issue here. Ever since AT and T came into the fray, they ruined everything. Started with the Snyder Cut. Hey, fans, want the Snyder Cut? You know that movie from five years ago that nobody gives a freak about except for Snyder fans? Yeah. Cool. Can we get the air cut too? Maybe. It started with that shit. Which divided fandoms, right? It made it, it put it put it pit fans against one another, right? Once one and move on and once we lived in the past. <clears throat> Bad move off jump. Then it comes to the point where HBO Max, HBO Max, we're pushing HBO Max. All of this was for the streaming service because they announced it, not that it would be coming to theaters, that the Snyder Cut would be coming to HBO Max. And then they decided to do my girl Patty dirty by saying, you know, here's some money to make it make it feel better because we mishandled scheduling your film. And let me talk about that real quick. The only reason why, in my opinion, that people are anxious or less anxious to see Wonder Woman 1984, or why I believe that Warner Brothers made this move, AT&T made this move, is because the way they scheduled and kept pushing back her film, they were sloppy with it, they didn't have, they didn't, they didn't plan it out right, they didn't use the right forecast. Universal moved Fast and the Furious 9 one time. They moved it a whole year. It's coming out in April of 2021. You think that thing is going to not come out? I don't know. We'll see what happens. When Black Widow got moved, got moved once. They said we going to, well, well, twice. We're going all the way to December. I believe that's what was said, right? December. She moved all the way to December, and now she's going to be coming out in May. That film in May could very well hit theaters and make $600 million. Easily. I hope that film comes out in theaters because this will be a huge slap in the face to AT&T and it's a real huge show of disrespect to how AT&T and Warner Brothers treated the Wonder Woman 1984 film. But the reason why is what happened. It originally could have came out last November, November of 2019, but you know, for reasons, you know, Frozen and just time, having better time to work on the film, they made it come out June 3rd, June 2nd of 20, or is it June 5th, of 2020, right? Then that's deep in the pandemic. They moved it from June to August. So you moved it only two months in the middle of a pandemic thinking it would just go away. And they were like, they were, they were so nervous and they were so greedy. They wanted to be the first ones out to really get the money. All right, we'll move from June to August. And then August comes around and whoop-dee-doo, nobody's better. We're doing worse. Then they were like, okay, from August, let's go October. They went from August to October. And then by October, it's whoop de woo no vaccine, nothing, everybody's tripping out, no one's wearing masks, spikes are going up, whoop de doo big surprise. Then they're like, okay, okay, well, 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 since October doesn't work, let's do December. And whoop de doo spiking, it's not over, and here we are still in the rut. So now they would have to have moved the film for a fourth time. Instead of being smart, my prediction was, I think that you should have moved Wonder Woman the first time to International Women's Day, which was in March, first week of March of 2021, because it just makes sense, right? Or just move it all the way to the summer of 2021. 
The fact that you, you're moving the film in increments of about two, two and a half months shows greed, impatience. It doesn't show wisdom. It doesn't show planning. And it's that lack of planning that has James Gunn and many other directors upset. You offered Patty and Gal the $10 million, which is cool. I'm glad that they got paid. But the problem is you can't do that for everybody else. You're not trying to do that for everybody else because what you offered James Gunn is insulting to him. You probably offered him two, three, four, five million dollars. Maybe not even that much. He's like, yo, <laughs> what the heck is going on? Christopher Nolan. Let's talk about Denis Villeneuve, who's coming out with Dune in October. What you going to do with that? Godzilla vs. King Kong. Matrix 4. All these amazing movies. The Fred Hampton story. What y'all going to do with that? Y'all going to dust that to the side, huh? This is only the beginning of the end of Warner Brothers' reputation. For far long, they've been known as a director studio, as a studio that allows the director to create their visions and do what they wish and just be more friendly and be more open to the creative process. By the end of this year, they their stock will have plummeted as far as directors, production companies, and talent, just overall talent that wants to work with them. Because when you turn your back on your talent and you turn your back on the people that make these quality films, they will turn their back on you. And that's exactly what I said a couple of weeks ago on my live stream that many people just did not understand. They just didn't understand it. You think people are going to forget about this? Absolutely not. James Gunn will never work for Warner Brothers again. Christopher Nolan is out of there. And I believe Patty is gone. Denis Villeneuve, he will never work for Warner Brothers again. And think about all the other, all these other movies. Matrix 4, all of these other films, 17 movies that y'all did. Huge blockbusters. They ain't never coming to work for you again because you tried to, because you shelved it through it to a streaming service without telling them. Now y'all about to get sued. You got the Directors Guild of America who put out a letter to them yesterday with a, a we, didn't, we should have had communication. And it gets even worse, guys. Like, they were, communi they, the Directors Actors Guild uh, reached out to them via letter yesterday, yesterday evening. And would you believe that they had a meeting with the Directors Guild in November of 2020? 20 or whether it was November and they talked about this very same thing and it's like they had a meeting about what could happen here and Warner Brothers and AT&T talked to them in Greenblatt shelved them and pushed them to the side and didn't take anything that the Directors Guild requested or even talked about it's just a lack of I don't care what y'all talking about we're doing what's good for us and I'll probably report on that article a little bit later today because it's really enlightening to show exactly how black -y this move is. You're black people. You're strong army people. You're doing 1930s shady business tactics. And that just doesn't work in 2020. So, uh, yeah, <clears throat> add James Gunn to the fray. Uh, DC just doesn't look as good to me. Uh, shout out. And I'm looking for tomorrow. Tomorrow's the day. It's Disney Investor Day. So I'm looking forward to see what they do. If they announce... <laughs> God, if they announce that Black Widow is going to keep its May release date and it's going to come out strictly in theaters, pff, doom and gloom. Goodbye. Rest in peace, WB. Disney has your balls in a vice. Disney has AT&T, Warner Brothers, Warner Media's balls in a vice. All Disney has to do at this investor day is say every single 2021 film is coming out in theaters. And if they don't, they could say we are compensating and we've already had discussions with our directors. We've had discussions with the creators. And if we are releasing it on streaming, we will be compensating them. There is a plan. They have been in the know. Y'all done. Y'all already done. But y'all really done after that. God dang. Subscribe to the channel for more of that real content. I'm Jody Joe. And I'm out this thing, man. Deuces.